Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the uncommon Psychic-type Pokémon LGM and its relatively rare evolution BHEM, collectively known as the Cerebral Pokémon. Extremely bizarre in form, and even stranger in their behavior, the members of the LGM family are unique Psychics that can more than put their bizarre powers to good use to give opponents more than just a splitting headache. LGM possess slightly humanoid forms with bluish-green skin and small, stumpy legs without toes, as well as a small tail that protrudes to a point on their posterior. Their hands are bulbous in nature, connected to the main body by a pair of striped arms, and they have a trio of small, crystalline orbs on their palms like digits, colored red, green, and yellow. Their head is massive compared to the rest of their body, with a pair of black lines circling the base which their large, green eyes sit on top of, and the front of their head is marked with a series of black lines that form an abnormal pattern, the physical form of their head being roughly egg-shaped with a pair of semicircular depressions on each side of their head. Their evolved form, BHEM, share a humanoid body shape with their pre-evolved form, with the same sort of limb arrangement, colored orbs and all, but their flesh has turned a brown color, and they now possess a skirt of brown flesh that covers part of their lower torso and legs, which has a slit at the edge in the back where their tail used to be, now completely absent, with four button-like protrusions on their abdomen and a collar of muscle around their back that partially circles around to their front on their neck. Their head has the same basic shape and pattern on the flesh, but the bottom edge rounds down into a bowl-like form, giving it the appearance of a hat with a raised rim. Their eyes have changed shape as well, as while they still glow green, they are partially connected in the middle to form a bizarre single-eye dual-lens system, with pinprick black pupils being visible in this form. LGM and BHEM are incredibly strange creatures, whose exact spatial and biological origins are still a relative mystery to this very day, only being observed in parts of the United States and a scant few other locales across the globe. All that is known for sure is that these creatures appeared in the desert of the state of New Mexico about 60 years ago suddenly and in large numbers, and started to slowly spread out across the land from there, forming small pocket communities in various places across the United States. Why they appeared only then, and where they truly came from, is still uncertain, though their resemblance to traditional depictions of grey aliens from science fiction as well as their abnormal telepathic and psychokinetic powers, have led many to believe that the creatures are, in fact, extraterrestrials from another world. This is especially so, because their appearance is often linked to a supposed UFO that crashed in the same immediate area around the same time, with many reports of alien encounters being determined to simply be the result of encounters with these bizarre creatures. Now, while we do have examples in the Pokémon world of verified alien life forms, such as Deoxys and Qrem, the belief that these creatures share an origin outside of this planet is, unfortunately for some, simply not verifiable. Though their forms are indeed very odd-looking, their genetic code shows identical markers to that of other Earth-based life forms in ways that demonstrate that they are indeed from this world. In addition, even if they did travel here, the question of how is a large one, as there has never been any report of a craft of any sort being associated with them or seen in their presence. Moreover, even though these creatures do communicate in a verbal language that is not understandable by most other Pokémon, they do have the ability to communicate telepathically, and they have demonstrated an understanding of the planet's geology and geography that would make little sense for isolated communities unless they were already quite familiar with the planet. As such, while these creatures do possess some unique psychic powers, they generally fall into the category occupied by many psychic types, namely, being extremely weird to some, but relatively normal for psychic-type Pokémon. Still, their powers are quite incredible, and their reliance on psychic energy for most forms of combat tactics translates clearly into their abilities, as these creatures normally have access to telepathy and synchronize as base abilities, while those that are more intelligent than normal and are able to readily study opponents to maximize their power input can also possess Analytic as a hidden ability. In terms of stats, in the case of BHEM, while these creatures are able to wield psychic power quite effectively, their overall physical forms are not built for serious combat roles, and they are lacking in terms of stamina, 
physical strength, defensive strength, and especially mobility, their legs being unable to move that quickly. So most of their base stats are below average for fully evolved psychic type Pokemon. Thankfully, at the very least, their special offenses are quite strong, giving them an above average base special attack stat for a fully evolved Pokemon of their type. And with all of that said, even if their stats are not that terrific, these creatures are more than capable of using some special powers to make life for the opposition a nightmare, and in turn are definitely not creatures worth underestimating in any fight. Even at a very young age, LGM are gifted psychics that can make good use of their strange psychic powers to literally put the squeeze on the minds of opponents in battle. While their special offenses might not seem to be as strong as those of other young psychic types like Abra or Solosis, the truth is that these monsters have a tremendous amount of psychic power within them. The catch is that, unlike the former two, their power is readily weakened when focused on multiple targets, being most efficient when they are targeting a single individual. When these creatures put their mind to it and use their abnormally large brains, which take up most of their head's interior, they can concentrate and bombard opponents with concentrated waves of psychic energy so strong that they can actually cause the nerve cells of opponents to deform slightly, literally squeezing their brains to cause massive and damaging headaches that can sometimes completely paralyze targets until the attacks cease. This makes these small creatures a serious handful to have to deal with, but they are thankfully quite friendly most of the time and will only attack others in the wild if they feel that their life is being threatened. It is duly noted that communicating with the creatures can be a bit hard as they rarely ever cry out. Instead, they flash the colored orbs in the palms of their hands to create patterns that communicate language through a visual code. Scientists are still trying to decipher this code, but have made some headway and can tell that their language is far more complex than some might otherwise give them credit for, something that trainers should take note of if they truly wish to communicate properly with these Pokemon in and out of the battlefield. Behem, compared to their pre-evolved form, are far more vicious and forceful Pokemon when confronted, and while they communicate with the orbs in their hands like LGM do, this is about the only behavioral similarity that can be found between the two. These creatures are highly territorial, and will viciously strike at any intruders that care to get near them and others of their kind without permission, and tend to be much crueler in the way that they deal with attackers in a fight. As with LGM, these creatures can bombard individuals with such intense waves of concentrated psychic energy that they cause deformation of brain cells, creating intense headaches that can last for long periods of time and help to distract and damage other life forms. However, in their adult state, these creatures can produce much stronger bursts of energy and focus them on the targets of their attacks to not only induce cerebral shock, but, more importantly, actually short-circuit the brain cells of others. While this does no lasting damage to the neural tissue of the target, it does reset electrical connections between them and other nerve cells, especially in the hypothalamus, effectively wiping away their memories. Although this can be done in desperate situations to completely leave a target blank, in most cases, BHEM will only use this power to wipe away certain memories in order to keep them and their kind safe, usually of initial encounters so people go back to their daily lives and leave them alone. This can prove to be a deadly weapon to use in a fight, since it can help wipe the minds of opponents that think they have figured out the battle strategies of these alien-like monsters, in turn making them far trickier to deal with and counter than their stats and natural limitation to normal and psychic type moves for offense and defense in most cases might otherwise dictate. Though they might seem to be out of this world in more ways than one, the members of the LGM family are still fascinating Earth-born creatures that can more than prove to be a unique challenge to face on any Earthen battlefield. It might take some time to get these creatures into an adult state from a young age, but their special powers and exceptional intelligence can still make the wait worthwhile and give the opposition something to think about in a fight, if they even can think after encountering these beasts. Do yourself a favor and, if you come across one of these creatures in the wild, make sure that you try and stay on their good side and don't give them a reason to fear or attack you. LGM might not be able to do much other than give you a splitting headache, but run across a BHEM and it's likely that you may end up not remembering the encounter at all at the end of it. If you can even remember who you are afterwards, that is.
Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.